Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Trail Makers, and today we're gonna attempt to build a car that might be a hover car, but is also kind of not a hover car at the same time because we're gonna use hover pads for wheels. And what I mean by that is not just use hover pads where wheels would be, but actually create a wheel out of hover pads that rotates as if it was a normal wheel, but they're gonna be hover pads. Now, I don't know what to expect with this. One thing I expect is there to either not be a lot of traction or it's gonna be too heavy and it might hit the ground anyway, in which case the wheels are gonna turn into explosives. But uh, I think it's gonna be fun either way. We'll try it, we'll see what it does, and then we'll react to whatever kind of adjustments we need to make based off of its performance and see if we can get anything interesting to happen. I don't really know if there's a particular goal here other than just to try it and see what happens. Like, if it works, that's great. If it doesn't work, I'm curious what way it's not gonna work. So I'm just, I just wanna find out what happens either way. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. So um, let's get building. gentlemen welcome to first prototype of the hover car i know this is probably not going to work there's already some things i know i'm going to have to change but i wanted to at least get the bare bones of what the vision is just to see what happens and this will guide what kind of adjustments we're going to need to make but we get in i'm not pressing anything yet and the good news is we hover oh oh that's kind of awkward so the good news is that we hover the bad news is um I don't think I know the bad news yet, but we're gonna find out the bad news pretty quickly. Oh, I think the bad news is, uh, since we don't touch the ground, we're not gonna have any actual traction here. <laughs> oh, the steering! That steering does not look healthy. Yeah, we're gonna have to change the steering hinge angles for sure. That's a little extreme. Let's go 30 degrees instead of 40 degrees. That feels a little bit more appropriate. And also, I'm gonna change the speed of the wheels because we're using these spinning servos. They're at speed one right now. Let's bump it up to, oh, it goes to 10. Let's go, let's go five for now. How's that gonna feel? Oh, whoa. Okay, torque is strong with this one. Holy cow. All right, well, the good news is one of the things I was afraid of happening is not happening. And that is that if we were too heavy, as we rotated the wheels, I was afraid that the hover pads were just gonna smack into the ground and explode. But as you can see, that doesn't appear to be happening. What is happening instead is a tremendous amount of torque. And that is really causing us to kind of uh, spin ourselves flipping it backwards. And it's really causing us to flip backwards here. So let's lower the speed until that stops happening. There we go, perfect. Look at this hover car. Oh, this works great. It is fantastic, doesn't it? Oh, uh, is... This is exactly what I thought was gonna happen. So what I think I'm gonna need to do is put some thrusters somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna have to try to figure out how to put thrusters on this thing, but we also want the turning to still work. I kind of want... I want it to feel like the wheels are doing something. Oh, you know what we can do? We can put thrusters after the turning, but before the wheel. This is gonna make the turning really, really floppy. But right now, this is the only somewhat legitimate solution I can see. Because one of the many issues with the wheels having no traction since they're hover pads is that if the thrusters aren't turning with the wheels, we're gonna have no traction for the turning to take effect from the wheels either. So the thrusters do have to turn with these wheels as well. All right, so we should have at least forward now. We can actually probably put backwards. Backwards doesn't necessarily have to be with turning. But now... That's not quite what I was expecting. Okay. That, it, it seems to not work. 
You know what I think the issue is? I think the thrust is above our center of mass, so it's actually pushing us into the ground more than anything. So what I'm gonna to attempt to do here is flip these upside down, and hopefully this lowers it by like a block. I don't know if this is gonna make a difference at all. All right, here we go. All right, this is surprisingly ineffective. I honestly thought the thrust was gonna help, but this does not help at all. I mean, it does help. We're going forward now, which is more than we could have said before, but it gets rid of all of our hover capabilities. All right, so our first prototype isn't that successful, but I do have some strange ideas that uh, might hopefully work. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna do an experiment here. I'm thinking what if the thrusters being after the steering bearings is what's causing the issues? I'm gonna make a separate system for turning and thrust, but first a little experiment to see if removing them from the steering, hinge the steering hinges is all we actually need. So I'm gonna put a thruster in the front, actually two thrusters in the front, and then two thrusters in the back as well. All right, we're gonna see if this makes a difference. All right, there goes nothing. So we get our wheels going and then our thrust goes, and that is not good. Basically, yeah, basically we kind of stop hovering when this happens, which is bad. And part of the issue I'm seeing is that we have these um, corners of our thrusters that are essentially flattening on the ground. So the only way I can see around that is if we build a secondary set of these hover pads, which is gonna make us a lot heavier, that is offset by 45 degrees, so a, a hover pad is at touching the ground at all times. So I'm wondering if we can expand our wheels to include that. Okay, so I've built a new set of wheels and these things are just getting massive now, but uh, this was really awkward because I actually had to replace the attachment point from the, the outside of the wheel to the inside of the wheel for the first one. So there's some weird stuff going along in here, but then you can see I have a rotating servo in there. So that servo, when I press a button, should shift these outer ones 45 degrees, uh, enabling them to remain in contact with the ground. So if I press shift, there you go. You can see now we have 45 degrees there. And I'm hoping that's gonna help. I don't know. Well, let's see what happens if we try to go forward. The thrust still does not feel sufficient. I'm actually really surprised at how ineffective the thrust seems to be. And you know what? It almost seems like it's the steering that's the issue. Perhaps we get rid of the steering and our problem is solved and we can have steering uh, happen through another method rather than trying to look like it's happening through the actual hover wheels. Because this is just gonna make the hover wheels themselves much less floppy and much more rigid when it comes to their orientation to the ground. Hmm, oh, I forgot to use shift. Okay. All right, so perhaps we're just too heavy for these thrusters then. Now let's add some more thrust, see if we can get ourselves to be a little bit more effective in our velocity here. All right, I've added six more thrusters. I don't know if this is gonna work. All right, well, it works really good before I start spinning my wheels. And then, man, once I start spinning my wheels, it seems like just the hover, the hover contact is completely destroyed, which is kind of interesting. So when I re when I repair, when everything's perfectly level, it works great. But then as soon as the hover pads are off kilter with the ground, they lose all of their effectiveness. So I'm gonna do a, an experiment here, and I'm going to change the hover pad distance. Uh, I'm gonna start with minimal distance because that equals stronger hover pads and we're gonna see if that helps and Then we'll go if that makes it worse Then we'll go to the opposite direction and see if more distance is better even though they'll be weaker technically All right, I think I've selected all the hover pads So I'm gonna put the distance on minimum because we've discovered through our testing that this means that they're gonna have the strongest push against the ground Just not as far. All right and go this is better. I feel like we're faster now. Man, this thing looks so strange. So the additional wheels might be kind of pointless at this point. I don't really know. I guess we can easily find out though. All right, so we're maxing out at around 30 kilometers an hour at this rate here with how many thrusts we have. So I'm gonna save this version of the vehicle 
I'm gonna delete the outer wheels and we're gonna see if it makes it if they make any difference whatsoever having the 45 degree angle there. All right, so now we are without the second set of wheels, so we no longer have that 45 degree uh, cover for the ground. So let's see if we go. Oh, oh, this is just a pure weight thing at this point. Like these wheels aren't any more effective on their own, but we just have so much less weight that the thrusters are just that much easier. Oh, there goes the explosions. Okay, so it seems like weight is a bigger factor for our velocity than hover contact. One thing we didn't try yet is let's spawn in the previous version. And then we're gonna try it with all the hover pads on maximum distance just to see what kind of effect that that has. Are we gonna be more than 30 or less than 30 kilometers an hour with maximum distance? All right, here we go. We're putting the distance from 0.5 all the way up to two. Now let's see if we can even keep ourselves off the ground here. Ooh, like barely. All right, and here we go. <laughs> okay, maximum distance is clearly worse than minimum distance. Yep, confirmed. And uh, one set of wheels is much more effective than two sets of wheels just based off of weight. This is 903 kilograms with the two sets of wheels. So you can contrast that with 644 with the uh, single set of wheels here. So I think this one, what are our hover pads? Are they on 0.5 here? All right, the hover pads are on 0.5 distance. So I think this is going to be, uh, I don't know how we're going to turn here. I might have a solution. But I think this is going to be the hover car that we work with. However, I'm tempted to make our wheels go out a little bit further just to give ourselves a wider base here. All right, so here is my solution to the control issue. So now I have my front two thrusters and back two thrusters set on rotating servos so I can now turn like this. So uh, we can't go until we do the thrust, but we're light enough that this is enough thrust to override it for the most part. Oh, this is bumpy for a hovercraft. Oh, this is real bumpy. <laughs> All right, now we're just a flying craft. Oh. This is not working quite as I had envisioned originally. See, like before I start turning my wheels, it feels so nice. I was hoping that it was gonna keep this level of hover as the wheels were rotating, but it just doesn't wanna do that for some reason. Like even if I stop spinning them afterwards, it just ruins it completely. Like, look at this thing. This is like the bumpy, oh. This is the bumpiest hover ride you could imagine. Also, one of the deadliest, probably. Actually, that's not true. Hover Hovercrafts in general are pretty, pretty deadly, all things considered. Especially if you're gonna run them over into the uh, hydraulic press over here, which is actually not working out quite as easy as I wanted it. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's sad. That's kind of sad. Ooh, do you think we'll be able to go over water? I highly doubt it, but I'm gonna find out. Okay, that that's not a good start. <laughs> okay, now pick up speed, pick up speed, pick up speed, and no, I, I don't know what I expected. I really don't know what I expected for that. Like for the most part, when you're looking at it, you can kind of see that it does try its best to hover above the ground. But the rotation, I feel like what's happening is there might be a, somewhat of a timing delay between when the hover pads detect ground and then when they actually apply a force to the vehicle. So once they start spinning like this, there's really not enough time for the hover pads to react to detecting the ground before they start applying that force. So I think the main thing left to do is uh, let's start on top of a hill and see how far this thing can make it down the hill before it explodes. So I think here's a good start up here. Let's slowly go down here. Then we're gonna go through that archway and then down the big hill, the big dirt hill, and hope that uh, we'll make it down at least halfway before something terrible happens, which I think something terrible is about to happen already. Oh, no, we're surviving. We're not damaged yet. Okay, here we go. We're here. We're here. And we're going. How much speed can we pick up? 130, 150. Oh, we're in the air now. This doesn't really... Okay. Oh, and we don't have any, any vehicle anymore. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, there is one thing. One thing I had not tried. And I, I thought about this at the beginning and completely forgot about it until now. I'm going to add suspension. Not necessarily because I think it's gonna help anything at this point, but because I thought it might help things at the beginning, but now I just wanna see what it does, which I'm pretty confident is gonna be not helping. 
All right, here we go. Suspension with hover pads. Does that, does that even, is that even a thing? Oh, I mean, it appears to be a thing before the hover pads activate. Oh, look at that bounciness. That feels good. Is this better? That is cushioning a lot of the bounciness from the hover pads, like hitting the ground a little bit. Look at them go. I think we've made something. I'm actually really surprised that this makes it better. This seems to make it so much better. All right, where are we going to get up to? 100, 100, uh, 20, 30, 100, 30, 4, 100, almost 40. Look at this. We're not exploding. I am thoroughly surprised. Oh, I am thoroughly surprised at the effect that the suspension had on this. I guess it kind of makes more sense now that I'm looking at it because it was so bumpy without them. So we are absorbing a lot of... Oh, a lot of that impact. This actually feels so much better now. Except for the turning. The turning isn't that great. But you know what? I can fix that just by adjusting these angles here. Let's just put that at like 80 degrees. A little extreme, but it should help us out there a little bit with some turning. Not bad. This thing is not bad. Uh, any bets on whether you think it could do the loop? I'm gonna say 95% no, but sometimes these things surprise me. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a no. That's, that's probably gonna be a no. I mean, we made it to the other side of the loop. Okay, so I gotta say, to be honest, this vehicle isn't quite the failure I was thinking it was gonna be after I first started testing it out. So this is kind of working as intended here. Almost. It's not as hovery or floaty as I wanted it to be, but it works. So I'm gonna say by Scrapman standards, this doesn't work great, but at least it works. So I'm gonna say that this is a pass. This is definitely a pass by Scrapman standards, because as we all know, it doesn't have to work great. It, it just has to work. And with the suspension especially, this is working. We have a vehicle here. And this vehicle is going into the spinner gauntlet because, okay, or it's not going into the spinner gauntlet. It, it's just going to be its own spinner gauntlet, apparently. <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful sequence of events. Oh, I do have to try the jump, though. I do got to try that jump real quick. We're just going to do this real quick for the end of the video. So while I'm getting ready, set up for this jump, which is probably going to be harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I want to know down in the comments, did hover wheels... Oh, this is not working. This is not working. Did the hover wheels vehicle exceed expectations or uh, did it did it fall short? I don't know what you guys expected. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm having a really hard time just getting on top of this jump here. <laughs> Basically, I just want to know, did the final product uh, match up to what you thought it was going to be like? Or was it better? Was it worse? What did you think it was going to, how it was going to work? All right, here we go. I think we're lined up. Now, let's hope that we can stay straight. This isn't, oh, please stay straight. Please, please stay straight. I don't know if we're going to make this. Uh, it's possible, though. This gap isn't huge. Uh, uh, okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, no, 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 no. We're almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Go! Subscribe for more stuff like that. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode. Leave some ideas down below. Let me know what you'd like to see. This has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.